Namaste everyone. Yesterday evening I was interacting with some abhyasis from United States and Canada over a Zoom call. The session ended with meditation but prior to that there were many questions related to meditation, cleaning and one gentleman asked a very fundamental question based on his background with Christianity where Lord Jesus talks about moment of death and how that moment demands your heart like a, like a feather, light. Pujya Lalaji Maharaj, when he himself describes the process of death, how each chakra, yogic chakra, starting with Muladhar, how they collapse at the moment of death and how each element, meaning Panjabhutas, get dissolved and merges in the next chakra. When that is dissolved, it moves into another chakra dominant with another Panjabhutas and how it creates the impact on the body at the moment of death. Indian tradition also talks about lightness of the heart by creating the remembrance of the Lord at the moment of death. That's why many, in many traditions they keep their children's name or grandchildren's name after gods and goddesses. So that at the moment of death, if you call your son who is Krishna or Rama, you would think of God, but it really does not happen like that. When you call Krishna your son, you are really addressing your son. You are not calling Lord Krishna, like Draupadi, out of frustration, out of helplessness, out of hopelessness. You surrender then the Lord can come. But there is no going and coming as far as Lord is concerned because He is everywhere. So what is the point of calling also that defies the logic? When we talk of bonding and attachment, the students who are here from Ames, Hyderabad, they can appreciate this example that bonding creates or demands energy input. Even in the material world, even in relationship, to create a bond, some level of energy input is required. That means reverse thing happens when you break the bonds, when you become detached. Stronger the bond as it breaks, more energy is released. When we understand this aspect, very simple scientific aspect of bonding attachment, that's why detachment in our Shastras is described and praised to its highest. But even detachment through aversion creates a worst bond possible. Just as attraction creates a bonding, there is even stronger bond created by aversion. It's not just the love that creates a bond, it's the hatred also creates the bond and often we remember such people whom we dislike more than the one whom we like. So it really doesn't matter whether you are attached or detached with aversion, it surely creates a, some sort of bonding. How to destroy this, how to dissolve this, how to annihilate this bonding is to create a stronger and eternal bond with the one who is eternal. If we create the bond with ephemeral, ephemerals are going to disappear anyway. 
and where will this energy be released? How will you make use of it? That's why also when we decry or remain resistant or with an understanding that desires how are good may be counterproductive because that itself creates a bonding. At the moment of death, if the heart has to become a feather-like, can I create that feather-like condition as and when I want it? You cannot. Either you are trained to do it from the very beginning or not. How do I create that moment of lightness that stays forever, eternally within me? The training starts very early in life. I'm very happy the students, they have begun meditation very early in life. They have a greater opportunity. After all, to my understanding, meditation is also an experiment in dying. Each time we dive deeper in meditation and lose our awareness, enter a state of samadhi, it is parallel to a death-like situation. You are so much gone inside, absorbed inside. Nothing matters at that time. This practice of dying every day in meditation, meaning Letting go of everything and be with our beloved, the eternal Lord, in our hearts. Then something magical can happen that even death cannot destroy us in any way. You will not be even be afraid of death because you have been dying every day anyway. You become part and parcel of this. Life is very short, but that period after death can be very long. For such a soul that is so refined, they cannot take birth immediately. Because their feather-like state doesn't let them come back. It's only the heavier souls with heavier hearts descends back into this world because they cannot rise above. They are repeated again and again, again and again. And for the souls like the great Mahavira, Babuji Maharaj said he was so pure. He had to wait from his previous birth to his most latest birth for 5,000 years. Because he could not find a matching embryo, matching soul, matching mother's vibrations that could attract such a soul. So, in short, try to lead a life like a feather full of light, lightness of the heart. You carry certain emotions with hurt, with arrogance, with pride. Are they really worth it? Think over it that I am crying for my beloved. Who is your beloved anyway? These are all ephemeral, temporary relationships. Nothing wrong with them. Be with the family. They are good. Look after them. Respect them. Honor them. There is nothing wrong at all. Because that is God-given. Your parents are given by God. Children are given to parents by God. We are each other's gift. Such a bonding is welcome. They have to be grateful. And such bonds should remain eternal. Why would I try to break my bond with my mother? It will be foolishness. It's the most welcome. People say, 
that when Lord Krishna had created this Mahabharat, but he did not fight the war. And now we learn one lesson that whenever the Lord is on your side, your victory is assured. And people love this statement so much that, oh, if God was on my side, I would win. But I would say something different. If God is on my side, I can even withstand all the losses of my world. Victory is meaningless when Lord is with me. Thank you.